I bought this Atari 2600 and some games at a thrift store, but I don't have a good way to connect it to a modern television since it comes with this RCA plug for an RF signal output to an old television. So I looked up ways to modify it and I found a few different mods to provide composite video and a mono audio output on RCA jacks that I can connect to an LCD television. I saw a single transistor circuit, but some people had issues with it, so I chose to try this two transistor circuit I found on this forum. I duplicated the schematic and made a PCB with today's sponsor, PCB Way. The board is relatively simple. It's got the two transistors, an audio input one pin connector test point here, and this five pin header here, which connects this to the Atari 2600. Then we have mostly resistors, one capacitor, and a trim pot to adjust video gain. So if I take a right angled 0.1 inch pitch header here, the board ultimately gets soldered to the Atari right here, and we'll see that in the instructions for doing the modification. There's some preliminary prototype circuit drawings on this forum, including a spice simulation of the video amplifier, if anyone wants to go check out the forum. But basically, Here's the original prototype from this thread. This brown wire here goes down through the board and just connects basically right here on the bottom side of the board to get audio into this board, and it essentially passes through to the RCA audio out. A couple of components are removed from the Atari involved in generating the original RF signal, including a transistor, an inductor, and depending on various instructions and the exactly which Atari model this is, 4-switch, 6-switch, PAL, NTSC regions, some people also remove these components, a capacitor, inductor, and some other resistors, capacitors here. And right here is an RF circuit box that also gets removed. And then the new board plugs in here. There's another view of the board with the five pin right angled header, taking five volts and ground from Atari, as well as video, doing the amplification, taking audio, and then passing audio out through an onboard series resistor and the amplified video out. There were some example screen captures with this one being an LED television, so I would expect sort of results like this. There's some more talk about components on the schematic to remove from the Atari. So some people are wondering about adding some intentional distortion to the image, and also the fact that our cameras may not correctly pick things up. For example, the zero on the score here, if that's the score, it kind of looks a little blurry, but it could also be a 3D shadow. I'm not sure what was intended, but after some adjustments on this example from the forum, this looks a little more clear to me. So it's been a long time since I saw Atari games in their original intended presentation. I'll just have to try it out for myself with the games I have and see what happens. And I ended up looking on this other form because I couldn't really find exactly the instructions for the NTSC 1980 Atari 2600 circuit board I have, which is a four switch model. So when I came here, I saw instructions for NTSC, and it only says to remove a resistor, a transistor, an inductor, and the RF box. So transistor, inductor, and one resistor here, even though on this picture that doesn't look like a resistor to me, but on my board it is, and this RF box. So I took all of these components out, and I had to struggle to get this big metal RF enclosure out, but ultimately I finally got it. And in this form, they're actually using a single transistor version of the circuit, but it still takes 5 volts ground and video from here, and then audio comes from this fourth component in. So when I hooked this up, I just ran an audio wire down through this hole, and I put it on the bottom side in this same spot, and then I put the metal enclosure that used to be on top of here back on. Before putting everything back together, I decided to look at the video signal coming into the board and leaving the board on the scope. The signal looked the same coming in and leaving the board, which is good that it doesn't appear anything is changed or distorted 
it's just twice the amplitude of the original input video signal. And once I had the basics hooked up and the RF shield back on, I brought the system to a television with RCA video and audio inputs to test it out. I tried adjusting the gain trim pot, but nothing seemed to change on the picture, so I figure maybe the television is just taking the signal and conditioning it regardless of its level, and so I'm just going to test it as is. I'm noticing as I try different games, certain ones appear to be as normal looking as I would expect, but others appear to maybe have some blurry aspects to them, like especially the score numbers on certain games look shadowed or ghosted, but I couldn't make that change by adjusting the gain pot, so I'm just not sure if it's simply the way it is. I once read somewhere that old games from the 80s would look weird on an LCD screen because they were designed for display on a CRT, so colors may bleed into each other and help actually create the intended image, but when we look at the accurate pixels on an LCD, it just looks weird. So I'm going to consider this a success, because at least now I can hook it up to a television and use it. What am I supposed to do? Am I a giant whale? What's going on? Huh? Oh, I can shoot backwards. What is this? A rabbit? 